Hello and welcome to the special show Living Long and Healthy with COVID Vaccination. India is in the midst of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and it is different in many ways from the first wave in September 2020. The only way we can defeat this virus is through vaccination. And the good news here is that India has opened up vaccines for all over the age of 18 years from May 1st. Today we have experts with us who will answer any doubts of ours on vaccination. Let me introduce the guest to you. We have Dr. Chandrakant B. Chavan. He's a consultant, cardiologist and electrophysiologist at Rhythm Heart Clinic, Pune. And Dr. Deepu Rajendran, consultant, interventional cardiologist at Travancore Medical College Hospital, Kolam. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us and you know, for being part of this wonderful initiative which seeks to address the concerns in people's minds with regards to the COVID-19 vaccination and also living in this new normal. So, Dr. Chandrakant, uh, let me come to you first. What are the different technologies that are being used in Indian vaccines? Uh, presently in India, uh, Minister of India and Center for Drug Control Organization has given uh, permission for two different vaccines in India. One is uh, Covishield and the other is Covaxin. Covishield is one which is manufactured by uh, Serum Institute of India. And Covaxin is the one which is manufactured by Bharat Biotech India. Uh, Covishield is a live attenuated vaccine wherein a live inactive adenovirus containing a DNA which is encoded for a spike protein is used. So once this DNA enters the host cells, it will produce a spike proteins and a human body forms antibodies against these spike proteins and they will help you to protect against COVID infection. Whereas Covaxin is the one which is inactivated dead virus is used in this vaccine. So when the antibodies are produced, they are usually produced against uh, all the virion proteins uh, with this uh, Covaxin. Okay, great. I think you've really wonderfully explained that to us. Dr. Chandan, let me ask you, you know, how is the mRNA technology different from the technology which we are using in our vaccines in India? Can you explain that to us, please? Uh, mRNA or messenger RNA, uh, these are actually genetic material which tells the body cells how to manufacture certain proteins. So here in uh, mRNA vaccines, what we do is we give artificial mRNA to the body in the form of vaccines. And this mRNA tells the cells in our body how to manufacture certain proteins of the COVID-19 virus, especially the one that is used is the spike protein. And once a person is vaccinated, the cells in the body manufacture the spike proteins of the COVID-19 virus. And our immune system recognizes these spike proteins as foreign and attack against these spike proteins. And they learn how to deal with these spike proteins. And subsequently, if any of these persons who are vaccinated expo gets exposed to a COVID-19 virus, the immune system is able to tackled them early and efficiently so as to prevent infection by this COVID-19 virus. Currently, only two mRNA vaccines are available. Uh, one is by the Pfizer and the second by Moderna. Both of these are not available in India. And uh, hopefully, this will be soon avail made available to the general population. As of now, we're still waiting and, you know, when, they, when they're available to the general pop population. Dr. Chavan, tell me, are there any major differences in the efficacy and the safety between the vaccines based on the manufacturing process? There are no uh, major differences in safety and epic efficacy of these vaccines. Whenever a vaccine is uh, being granted usage in the community, uh, it goes through uh, various uh, clinical phase, uh, clinical trial phases. That is a, a experimental phase, and there is a there are different phases: phase one, two, and three. After going through these rigorous protocols, only the vaccine is given permission. Uh, Covishield has finished all clinical trials uh, based for the safety and efficacy, and it's allowed its uses now in our country. Covaxin, although it was granted an emergency uses after a phase through two trial, uh, but now, presently, uh, Covaxin also has uh, finished phase three trial data collection and has been published. And this also has been found to be more effective even against the mutants of the uh, or newer mutants of the COVID uh, virus. Both the vaccines are equally effective. More than 80 percent of the people treated with that these vaccines will develop antibodies. And there are few breakthrough infections are seen, but they are less common. And usually they are more common with the healthcare individuals where they are more exposed to the COVID infected patients. 
Okay, so that's for sure that we really need to understand that it's very, very important to take the vaccine to protect ourselves against this virus. Coming to you, Dr. Deepu, will the side effects be any different for the people with a heart condition or a cardiovascular disease? Post-vaccination side effects uh, most commonly encountered are the injection site pain, uh, mild fever, general weakness, malice, headache, all this. These are common in all group of population and in patients with heart disease there is no increased incidence of side effects following vaccination. Only thing to be taken care of is that uh, persons with heart disease may uh, many of them may be uh, using blood thinners. In these patients, it is advisable to uh, not have a massage or rub at the injection site following vaccination. Instead, it is always advisable to have a sustained pressure at the injection site for one to two minutes because of the risk of local hematoma and swelling formation. Okay, so I think that's a really good point uh, which you've told us. Uh, Dr. Chaman, like Dr. Deepu has told us about heart, you know, the cardiovascular problems. Can you tell us, is vaccination effective and safe in patients with uncontrolled hypertension? You know, so should people continue with their medication on the day of the vac vaccine? There's a lot of confusion on this. Can you tell us about this, please? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. I think, as you said, there is a lot of confusion regarding uh, use of vaccine in uh, hypertension, hypertension patients. Initial theories uh, regarding experimental data which showed that uh, angiotensin converting enzyme is the one uh, which uh, mediates this uh, COVID infection process and uh, antihypertensive drugs are the one which are uh, angiotensin converting, converting enzyme inhibitors. However, this uh, experimental data has not been uh, translated into a clinical trial. So there has been no significant association has been shown with ACE, uh, the angiotensin converting enzyme, enzyme inhibitor antihypertensives and COVID infection. Uh, hence, uh, patients should be treated with antihypertensive drugs adequately as these are this is a subgroup which is more prone for uh, infection, COVID-19 infection. And those who are taking vaccine also should take antihypertensive day drugs on the day of vaccination. In fact, they should be adequately hydrated. One can take a food and take their antihypertensive uh, doses as uh, prescribed by the physician and go for vaccination with the free mind. So we've understood about, you know, if somebody has some heart issues or even if you're a hypertension patient, Dr. Deepu, is vac vaccination safe for people who've undergone a heart procedure? Any heart patient, including those patients who had an angioplasty, or a bypass or a valve surgery, they should be vaccinated. They are safe and the vaccines are safe. Uh, in fact, these persons with heart disease, in, including those who have undergone angioplasty or bypass surgery, these are the group who are most susceptible to a serious COVID infection. And hence, these persons should be given priority and uh, vaccinated as, an, uh, as a priority. Thank you so much, Doctor. On that note, we're going to take a short break. Please stay tuned as we have a lot more coming up. Welcome back. You're watching Living Long and Healthy with COVID Vaccination. We have Dr. Chavan and Dr. Deepu who are answering all our doubts regarding vaccination as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Chavan, coming to you, should patients undergo pending angioplasties which were postponed due to the earlier COVID-19 spike, is it safer now to undergo these procedures considering we are now in the second wave? Yeah, I think it's a good question. It is recommended normally to avoid all elective procedures when you have such a pandemic where human-to-human uh, -human transmission is going to be very high. Hence, all elective procedures wherein you can conserve patients or, or give a conservative treatment to the patient and postpone the operation should be normally avoided. However, some patients will have a critical disease or some may require a primary angioplasty or it, and coronary angioplasty may be a life-saving procedure or some cardiac procedure may be life-saving like pay, uh, permanent pacemaker implantation in certain situations. So these are the procedures which need to be conducted. You need to take COVID appropriate uh, protocols and conduct these procedures uh, safely in these patients. Finally, the discretion whether to go ahead with the uh, any procedure would depend on a treating physician and patient's uh, critical uh, condition, criticalness of the disease uh, at the 
uh, presentation. I think that's a very important point. What you've said, we need to maintain COVID protocol. You know, whether it's inside, when if somebody's having a surgery, or even outside. Besides vaccination, another great way to protect yourself is to wear masks, maintain social distancing, and as well as, uh, you know, of course, we are saying use the vaccine and sanitize your surroundings. Dr. Deepu, your observations as to how have people managed heart disease and cardiovascular conditions during COVID-19? It has been uh, more than one year since we have uh, been fighting this pandemic, and uh, to be frank. Most of the patients with heart disease have managed their uh, disease well during this pandemic, at least reasonably well. With the routine use of uh, teleconsultation and the frequent use of the social, message, social media platforms like WhatsApp, most of them have managed their disease well. Going forward, my suggestion would be that uh, in those persons who are on routine cardiac medications, they should closely interact with their physician or their cardiologist uh, with over telephone or uh, WhatsApp and uh, they can continue their medications as per their advice. But uh, if any of them develop a new symptom or if there is any worsening of symptom, it is always advisable uh, to have an in-person consultation with their physician or uh, cardiologist irrespective of the COVID situation. So we need to be in touch with the doctors. I think that's an, again, very important point. Dr. Chavar, are there any changes in the home management guidelines for COVID-19 management? Can you, can you share that with the viewers and us, please? Oh, yes. I think uh, home management of uh, COVID is usually for a milder form of disease. There have been a small uh, changes uh, in the home management of uh, COVID-19 infection being there. Uh, usually, uh, patients with the milder symptoms are uh, uh, prescribed this home management. Once you are home quarantined, it is usually advisable you need to be in a separate room with a separate bathroom. SMS uh, protocol, that means social distancing, uh, continuously wearing mask and uh, frequent sanitization needs to be followed uh, very strictly. Uh, oxygen saturation monitoring needs to be done. There is a small change in the protocol in the sense you need to do a six-minute walk test to detect the lung involvement early. That means uh, at a milder pace, you can walk for six minutes and uh, you are getting a drop in the saturation. And this needs to be monitored frequently, maybe uh, uh, two to three times uh, in a day. Uh, as well as uh, drugs, uh, whatever prescribed by the physicians, antiviral drugs uh, needs to be taken uh, strictly. And uh, you need to be in, come in contact with the physicians, uh, preferably on a daily basis uh, when you are home quarantined. Okay, so you've explained us, you know, what a person should do if they are home quarantined. Dr. Deepu, tell us, when should a person, you know, who's diagnosed with COVID-19 think of hospitalization? Many times one just panics, so the oxygen saturation level is going down. When is that time when one should actually think of going to the hospital? Now, uh, the second wave of the pandemic is raging and uh, the hospital beds are in short, oxygen supply is short. We are hearing all the news. So, uh, the decision on hospitalization is, of course, a very crucial thing. Uh, uh, there is no confusion regarding uh, one group of persons, that is persons who are severely ill and uh, significant symptoms with a saturation less than 90 percentage. When the oxygen saturation falls below 90 percentage, the patient must be hospitalized. If the person is totally asymptomatic and, uh, if, the, uh, and if the oxygen saturations are normal, there is no need for hospitalization, then a uh, uh, patient can undergo home isolation. In between, when the patient has milder symptoms, or mild or moderate symptoms, and if the patient has multi severe, uh, has comorbidities, significant comorbidities, which predispose the person to a severe COVID infection, like uncontrolled diabetes, severe obesity, uh, heart disease, lung disease, pre-existing previous stroke, all these persons should uh, consider hospitalization, be evaluated by a physician, and then decide on hospitalization. Okay, so those are some important points. Dr. Shavan, I want to ask you something, you know, coming back to vaccines. Covishield initially was said that the gap between the two jabs need to be about four to six weeks, and now they've increased that from six, you know, to six to eight weeks. Can you tell us why has that been done? Because again, a lot of people are confused asking why. Okay, I think this is uh, because of the post-vaccination, there has been some data that has been uh, coming ahead. And wherein, wherein it has been observed when the second vaccine dose, when it is given after six to eight weeks of the first dose, the antibody response, that means the antibody titers which are found in these uh, patients are little higher than the person who is uh, taking a uh, vaccine uh, four weeks later. 
so it means that it is adding or it is boosting the immunity uh, further if the there is a separation of doses of about 6 to 8 weeks for covishield so it is recommended nowadays to take the vaccine usually uh, the second dose of uh, covishield vaccine usually six, 6 to 8 weeks after the first vaccination which initially was 4 weeks so, Dr. Deepu, the other thing about vaccines, you know, many times what happens is a person takes a vaccine. In fact, a colleague of ours here in office, you know, the same thing happened, has taken the first shot and then starts developing symptoms. But one also thinks it's, you know, it's a part of the vaccine. I mean, it's, you know, just a follow up, like people have a body ache. So then how does a person know when to do the test? Because there's a lot of confusion on that as well. Almost uh, all patients, all persons who have been vaccinated will have uh, mild fever, generalized weakness, headache. And all these are common for even for a COVID infection. Uh, so the thing we can say is for following vaccination, the symptoms never, never last more than 72 hours. So if it persists for more than 72 hours, uh, uh, you have to consider other causes of, for this uh, symptoms. And the patient should consider being evaluated by a physician or being checked for a COVID uh, RT-PCR or an antigen test as uh, recommended by the local protocol. Dr. Chavan, another thing a lot of people want to know is, you know, now because people have got their second jab as well, you know, they're still getting uh, COVID-19 or they're getting infected. Is it milder that once you've had both the jabs? Oh, uh, yes. I think those who have received uh, uh, both the doses of vaccine, usually after 15 days of uh, last vaccine dose, patients develop good immunity. Hence, if you get a, if you catch a COVID infection by any chance, you you don't tend to develop any serious symptoms. You usually don't require even hospitalization in such a situation. And uh, the most important thing that is prevented is you are prevented from going to the death table. So I think that is what needs to be kept in my mind. And you need to take both the doses of vaccine as prescribed uh, by the government guidelines. Dr. Deepo, another thing which I would like to ask again, again with vaccination, is it true that the immunity when you get your second vaccine, it's gone down? Is that true? No, uh, the second dose of vaccine uh, doesn't immediately provide immunity. Actually, the vaccine is effective. Second dose, the immunity appears after 14 days. That is what Sir has already mentioned. That post the second dose, more, more, more than after 15 days is the time we have maximum immunity against COVID infection. And we don't know how long the immunity will last. As of now, there are no data to suggest uh, how long the immunity will last, whether we will need a subsequent dose or not. But uh, as of now, uh, we have to take the second dose of vaccine. Okay, so Dr. Deepa, I just ask, want to ask you another thing. You all have explained us really well about, you know, the vaccines, why it's important, how one should deal with, you know, if somebody has infection, whether they're home quarantined and when they need to go to the hospital. I have another question here, Dr. Deepu. Is it safe, vaccination safe for a patient who's had a stroke? Should we watch out for any specific symptoms? Yes, vaccination is perfectly safe in patients who had a stroke. Uh, as I had previously said, stroke is a high condition. Uh, patients with previous stroke are predisposed to the serious COVID infections and uh, vaccination definitely decreases their risk of having decreases their risk of having a COVID infection and more importantly definitely decreases the chance of having a serious COVID infection. So uh, all patients who previously had a stroke should definitely have uh, vaccination taken and both the dose to be taken as prescribed and there are no additional side effects compared to the general population in a person with previous stroke. Thank you, Dr. Deepu and Dr. Chavan, for taking time out and answering all those doubts and questions regarding the vaccines. As we end the show, a little reminder as well as a request to all our viewers to please get themselves vaccinated as and when they are eligible. Thank you so much for watching.